Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of RDR. Something special today, a little bit uh, out of left field from what I normally look at. Very similar to the portable TV, I am looking at a portable CD player. This is the Discman D143 with a manufacture date of April 1995. What's cool about this? Well, one, it's still in the box and it still has all the original materials minus the headset or the headphones, excuse me. So that is missing. However, everything else looks to be intact. Because I got such a good deal on this, I couldn't pass it up. Apparently it doesn't work, but we're going to clean it up, clean the disc lens itself and see if it plays something. All right, before we dive into the contents itself, let's just take a quick look at the packaging. So you'll see here that it boasts eight hours of playback and it has Mega Bass in the corner right there, which I remember my Discman from a few years, actually many years after this, about five or six, the first one I got, uh, boasted that as well with anti-shock. This does not look to have any type of anti-shock protection. Uh, considering it's from 95, that's to be expected. That didn't come out till a little bit later, late 90s, early 2000s. So, on the back here, we just get some of the specs again. It takes two double A's and uh, rechargeable battery pack, which I don't think I have. So if this did come with that, I am missing that. But uh, pretty straightforward on each side. And uh, yeah, it's pretty standard. So enough package. Let's dive into this and see what we got here. And the one reason I bought this was because I noticed all the paperwork was included. So that was great to see. A couple things we have here. We have the how to recycle your battery. Important information on how to use your headset. I absolutely love that they have a picture of how to wear it properly. That's hilarious to me. I mean, I just, or maybe not. I don't know what they're trying to show me here, but either way, something I would never care to look at, <laughs> honestly. Definitely surprised it's, it's made it this long. An extended protection program inside. Pretty awesome. Oh man. Now there's a stereo I would love to have. And there's an original, it looks like a D50 Discman. Those are the originals I believe from, I think they believe they started in 1984. And uh, of course only the wealthy could afford something like this at that time. But that stereo system with that built-in disc player right there, that is incredible. That D75, wow, that is just so cool. We also have the original cardboard insert that came in the CD player itself when it was purchased. So that's pretty awesome. Of course, it's not in there now. And then your limited warranty. Looks like you got 90 days of labor and parts and all that stuff here. Really good shape. You want to send in your Sony partnership, they have an envelope for you to do so. I feel like there's something in this envelope. There is not. And then a little note here that states, if the volume is too low at maximum volume set, set the AVLS switch to off. This must have been coming out with all of them. The, the copyright on this is 1993, but with this, and then of course the manual, which is cool to see it came with a paper manual and still exists and is still in great condition overall. So, I mean, when I bought this, I mean, I barely paid anything for it, so I was I wasn't expecting much. But uh, the fact that it, I knew it had the box, that was it. And then uh, 
It does have a charger here. I cannot tell if this is the original or not. It does need some repair on the cord. It's definitely bunched up with a ton of electrical tape, which I probably won't do anything about. I'll probably just replace this with a different charger when the time comes, but I mean, ugh. See that gigantic goop of cord tape there? I'm guessing it works though. We're definitely gonna try it with the power cord. And if that fails, we'll definitely put some batteries in. But a little piece for the power switch here that slides in like so. And then we have an unopened RCA uh, component. So you can hook this up to a stereo system or something of your choice. And then of course, we have the unit itself here in really good condition little bit of wear on the text on the lid but i mean to be expected the fact that this isn't scratched up too terribly everything looks to be in working order all the switches are here it's pretty great so real quick one rundown of what we got here i mean you have your basic buttons on the front here your pause play repeat some sort of play mode option selector there you have your skip track buttons at the top here. Looks like the headphone jack is right here. We have our volume, a line out option as well. Power on the back there. And then, it's nothing on this side. From what I can tell, hold on. Yeah, not a whole lot going on there. And of course you got your screen right there so that's great let's open it up here have a look on the inside now according to the seller it wasn't that it didn't power up it was that it wouldn't play the disc it would just skip a ton now that was the reason they were selling it for basically nothing on craigslist and i thought well it could be a lot of things i didn't really ask too many questions i just went and picked it up but my first instance is was you know she did mention her son was using it and it wasn't working and i'm thinking well maybe the disc is just disgustingly dirty who knows you know kids and discs don't go well together most of the time i mean even my discs show lots of abuse from being a kid and leaving them on the floor of my room without a case on them for days or months or years so it's a surprise that i have them in as good a shape as i do so that was my first thought but you know I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot, we'll clean it up, and uh, we'll see what we can do here. So, let's do just that, let's clean it up. First things first, let's uh, give it a little wipe down. All right, overall, pretty quick and easy to do. You know, just a nice spray down with Windex and a microfiber. Uh, really cleaned up the unit a lot. Looks much better. Uh, there's still, you know, some obvious scuffage and, you know, signs of use on the front here, which it's just the way it's gonna be, I'm sure. One thing I did wanna check is the battery compartment to make sure there's no corrosion. And the battery compartment looks as clean as it ever did. It probably very rarely held batteries. I bet it was used by a power cord most of its life as some often work so let's uh, go ahead and use a disc cleaner to get the lens cleaned here so let's hook this up see if the power's on and we'll uh clean up the inside now so i'm going to be cleaning this using a laser lens cleaner from top zone i have no idea who that is but uh i've used this in other things i use this in for example the thinkpad t43 to clean up that that uh DVD player and it worked fantastically. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try on the disc one here. All right, the tape head solution is on the disc. So let's go ahead and give it a try and see if we can clean it up. And uh, it is hooked up, so we should hear the sounds of the disc. We'll know if it's skipping right away. And if it doesn't play at all, we'll know that too.
Ooh, that's some bad noise right there. It doesn't sound good, folks. I'm also not hearing any audio at all. All right, before this gets any worse. At the very least, it should have done its job, clean the disc head. And that's pretty much all we want. So we'll hope the disc head got that far. We'll see. Let's just go try a CD here and see what happens. All right, let's give it a try. For this test, we are going to listen to a little Reload by Metallica. So this disc is in fair condition, so we'll see if it can handle that. Oh, that is a bad noise. If you can't hear it, it is a squealing noise. So there definitely looks to be an issue with the spin mechanism here itself. When it spins, it creates this horrendous squeal that is beyond my repair capabilities. My repair capabilities are very limited, as is. I've pretty much done everything I would think to do to try to repair this, which is very little and is basically just clean it. So since that did not work, that's the end of that for me. Well, dang, folks, that was not the outcome I was hoping for. It was definitely fun to take a look at. Unfortunately, I can't get this thing to play a disc, so the repairs are likely far beyond my capabilities and probably not really worth it, considering it's obsolete hardware. That, I mean, it's, it's a novelty item at this point for me. This is probably going to go on display in my office, though. It just, it's just cool enough to do that, so... I think I'll have some fun finding a good home for it in my office and uh, treasure it that way going forward. Let me know your thoughts on your first Discman. I remember that Christmas I got my first Discman was late 90s, early 2000s, and it was probably one of the best Christmases I ever had because these were pretty awesome little machines when CDs were all the rage. So I'll never forget it. Uh, let me know what you think of this model. If you ever had this model, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.